Hello, welcome to the next video. I'm in some woods. Um, yeah, so I'm doing a bit of training today, and I figured, you know what? Do a vlog while I'm out. I haven't done an out, out and about one in a while. Um, at least I don't think I have. Who knows? Uh, when did I last vlog? Also, who knows? Uh, anyway, for the purpose of this, I'm going to put these back on, unless they start to steam up immediately. Which I don't think they are, so good. Um, it's obviously raining, as I'm sure you can see. Um, so I did a bit of running and walking to get here. Which, you know, it was mostly walking, not going to lie. And the running wasn't very fast. And when I noticed that is when I decided to walk. So I was like, you know what, I've not done a warm-up or anything. And I could push myself to go faster, but obviously this is as fast as my body. I think that's a rabbit that just got attacked by like a water bottle or something. But there's nothing I can do for it. Sorry, that's very sad. Um anyway. Whilst I am very concerned, I'm not gonna go and see what's going on. Um too much. Um, right, yeah, no. I'm going to leave that be. Um, whatever's going on over there is nature. I'm going to let it happen. Uh, yeah. Where was I? Ah, uh, yes, um, hadn't done a warm-up or anything, that's how fast my body was comfortable going. That's where I was. Um, and I'm not really surprised. I had a very lazy yesterday, and I ate a lot. Uh, so, oh yeah, sorry about the camera angle. I put it up on a tree, so you get, like, height. But there was no place to put it properly, uh, horizontally on the tree. Which has led to this situation. Um, yeah, so... Oh, I figured I would uh, wait till I've done a bit of a warm-up, you know, until my body feels ready for it. I don't want to risk injuring myself because I have no reason to run super fast at that point. I'm going to be running back again anyway. Uh, so my plan here in the woods that I'm currently in is to do some skipping, hence the skipping rope. Um, then I'm going to whack that back in the bag, do some jogging around um, in search of a suitable height tree branch to do some pull-ups on, maybe a bit of tree climbing, and if I do some tree climbing then I can do some sort of leg pressy exercises, it's effectively a weird angled squat against a tree, where you hold on to the like, branch, you cl after climbing up the tree a little bit, put your legs on the trunk, and then do squats, um, that sort of thing, and then hopefully my housemate will be up and about when I get back, so I can do some handstand practice when I get back, but I'm going to run back from here probably about three quarters of the way and I'm about four kilometers I think roughly away from my house so I'll run 3k and then walk the rest like as a cool down maybe with the occasional sprint thrown into them to it just to add to the mix though those will be because of my app not because of my being like oh yeah I feel like doing a sprint right now but I have done that before um that. Anyway, on the way here, I was having a think. Uh, I recently watched Titans, the Netflix show based around a older group of the Teen Titans, um, with some of them being teens, some of them not, particularly Dick Grayson not. Um, the same goes for Starfire, um, or Coriander, as their name is, apparently. Um, and I like the Teen Titans show, not Teen Titans Go, the show, but just Teen Titans, the show, when I was younger, um, and I, but I've grown up a bit. Uh, I'd probably still enjoy bits of it, but I wouldn't be able to watch it properly, but I've enjoyed this because it's obviously intended for uh, an older audience, um, and yeah, it's good. But it's got me thinking about uh, vigilantes and stuff again, and I have always been of the mindset that... Um, 
the no killing rule is mostly there for the audience because practical vigilantes would. Of course, DC's gone down there and uh, done the whole injustice line, um, but like that's getting carried away with it. If you, you know, it's kind of like Batman on steroids, a rule through fear. And you don't want to rule, you don't want the, the vigilantes to rule, but I imagine it would work. But that's mostly because I was thinking about it as, you know, these are fictional characters. Why don't the fictional characters end each other? Um, and, you know, characters as weird and messed up as the Joker? Yeah, well, I mean, why wouldn't you kill the Joker? As far as anyone can tell, the Joker has no relatives. No one, apart from Harley Quinn and a couple of, like, his goons, would mind that he's not there anymore. There's not going to be a great deal of emotional trauma from that. Because um, you don't want to like keep a cycle going. But, also, you don't know. You never know. You can't know. That's the thing with uh, secret identities, I guess. People might be like, oh yeah, no, there's this person. And they are, you know, Batman. No one's going to care if Batman dies. Oh wait, there's the Bat family. Bell care, um, as Alfred, etc. Um, but outside of that, I was like, um, I, martial artist, etc., uh, have always wanted to make a proper martial artist in D and D because monks do it a bit. That's the, obviously what they're designed to do. They're warrior monk, uh, stereotypes, etc. Way of the open hand is the classic martial artist. The Kenshi monk is uh, effectively a Buddhist monk uh, who is particularly skilled in specific weapons. Um, then there's Way of the Drunken Fist. Um, that's an actual fighting style. Um, I mean, the Kenshi monk, if they use swords, could also be like uh, one of the many, many sword style artists. But I've always had an issue that that they're not versatile, and martial arts are. Um, so either, effectively, you make a battle master variation of the monk, or you make a battle master martial artist. Now there is an issue there with uh, natural armor or um, unarmoured defence, because martial artists should have some unarmoured defence. You can get around it with natural armour. Um, I think the best one is Loxodon, um, or maybe lizard folk. get it? Not 100%. Um, and there really should be a feat for it, just in general, of some sort. Like, you get to add half your proficiency bonus. Rounded down, I'd say. Um, to your unarmoured defence, because normally it's 10 plus dex, and that's it. If you add half your proficiency bonus, that won't make characters that get it anyway broken, because unarmoured defence is specifically a barbarian and monk trait, um, wouldn't do anything for natural armour, because it's worded differently, which apparently is very keen of a thing. I think it should work with it, so it might be... Um, unarmoured and natural armour, or unarmoured or natural armour, who knows, not this guy at the moment, but get that, it's a reasonable thing to have for a feat, because feats are pretty hard to come by, like as a fighter you get like five tops, and that's if you don't take any ability score improvements, um, six if you're a human variant, and any more than that you have to like train for and your DM has to be like, oh yeah, no, I'll let you train for this, etc, etc. Um, and that requires downtime, or a whole magic skadoogle, um, and yeah, it's it's a lot. What I'd do, though, is I would, um, no, what am I saying, what I'd do? Yeah, I would make a fighter, give them that feat, give them the unarmed fighting style, give them um, tavern brawler feat, and I think that any DM who likes fun would stack that, 
Um, in the same way that I think that it should st stack with the monk's unarmed striking, because it makes your dice a d4, usually you don't have a dice. If you are a monk, a d4's nothing, because that's what you have anyway, and then by the time you reach level 20 using a d10, so I think it would make sense for the monk to then be using a d12. Would that be biting in, fighting in barbarian territory? Because barbarians are renowned for being the people who use the d12s or the 2d6s more often than anyone else. Yes, but anyone with martial weapon proficiency can do that if they so choose. And a hobgoblin monk, you can get two martial proficiencies for that, I think. Um, they could be doing that anyway with their two normal attacks. And then, you know, it just means they won't be able to use any of the cool stuff they get to do with monk weapons. That's it. Uh, so I think it would make more sense if, yeah, if you take one of your four ability score improvements as a monk and throw it into Tavern Brawler, so then you can get the unarmed weapon, not the unarmed weapon, improvised weapon proficiency as well. It would make a lot of sense to then have that improvised weapon proficiency and get an extra dice upgrade to your iron arm strike therefore the fighter would then be if they didn't have a sh anything in their offhand a 1d8 unarmed strike and a d10 no they'd have a d10 if they didn't have anything in the offhand and a d10 a d8 if they did poor brain um so that's a thing i think that make a lot of sense because then they'll still be in their normal damage range of d10 d8 uh, so they don't lose anything apart from the fact they can't use magical weapons unless they get them like custom made because there are almost no unarmored like unarmed item weapons apart from uh, god bless you matthew mercer but it's a monk only item the, and it's a legendary item the wraps of diamac and there's a few other homebrewy ones um or that are very similar, like hand wraps, gloves, etc. Makes sense to have those things as monk weapons, uh, but monk exclusive magic items. But perhaps just have them. The requirement, instead of being monk requirement, it's a proficiency with unarmed strikes requirement. That way, the unarmed strike fighter would have proficiency. That's what we like to see! Um, and they could you then use the magic items, then they could have magical attacks, because that's the other thing. Um, a unarmed strike fighter doesn't have magic attacks at all. Which would mean that they would be absolutely useless against some enemies. Um, well, I say that would be absolutely useless. They would be a battle master. Battle masters have maneuvers. Maneuvers would still be useful because they could set them up, they could take their weapon away, etc. So say they're fighting a pit fiend that was immune to non-magical damage, or at least, you know, it's resistant. I'm not 100% sure on the stats and stuff. The fighter, pit, pit fiend has like the giant mace thing, I think. Could do a could attack them. They're not going to do any damage if they're immune, and they're not going to do very much if they're not. But at that level, like, say they're level 20. that level, they've got a d12 for their uh, maneuver dice. Um, superiority dice, they're the ones. Uh, weird name. But they can do a disarming attack, and then they could follow up with a trip attack, etc. And yeah, they're not going to stun the opponent like a monk can, but that's a one-trick pony kind of deal. Um, instead, they can take its weapon away, and then because they're a fighter and they're, they're a strength character, they can then use the weapon, potentially. Who knows? Um, obviously they won't be attuned or anything, but, I mean, if it's an innate magic weapon, like just a plus one magic weapon, boom, they then have the weapon. Uh, they might not be able to use it super well because it'll be too big, etc. Uh, but they can at least get it away from the enemy, and then that's going to help the team out. They're going to still be useful and versatile. But they would also make an excellent vigilante. So you give them a couple weapons. This way, they don't have to worry about that. And the classic vigilante weapons are things like clubs. So you know you could use clubs like the nightsticks, um, 
walking sticks, quarter staff, etc. Three section staff, collapsible staff, um, very few like vigilante superhero type people are going to use potentially lethal weapons. Happens, but not as often. Um, and then they could be magic weapons, but if they get disarmed, they should still be able to look after themselves. And I think that high level they could get like a vigilante costume, which is their armor, because they want the unarmored stuff, because they should be able to dodge and block and stuff better, and they should be able to take a hit better than other people, because they're used to it, they're conditioned, um, martial arts. But then high level you can get, like, instead of having ridiculously insane stat-wise, have it ridiculously insane flavor enhancing roleplay wise so they want armor that is kind of like the i think it's the cloak of glamour or glamoured leather armor etc where you can change how it looks that um because that way they can be walking around all bruce wayne in their suit and then uh they can just duck into an alley or a sewer or whatever and be like and say whatever the command word is and their full set of armor has changed into like a vigilante costume um because that'd be great that'd be amazing it's like concealed armor and it would also be enchanted so it's like it has maybe like advantage on some roles not necessarily stealth checks depending on the type of character you're going for but like intimidation or athletics checks, um, perhaps it can function so that it gives you damage with your unarmed strikes, and it would be the sort of thing where whatever the armor is, it maintains its durability, but the texture changes, so you can go to sleep in it because you just like turn it into pajamas. Those pajamas are bulletproof. However, uh, you build up to that point, so to start with they'll have like base level armor they're going to start with like i don't know what fight to start with but like leather armor if it's light armor and then like i don't know i don't really know much about medium armor um is scale medium armor potentially um but yeah stuff like that and they up it and they try and get it as concealable as possible uh don and doff it really quickly etc would be such a fun role playing thing and uh, Sean, if you do watch this, which I'm assuming you do, because I think you watch most of these, because I don't put them out very often, and whenever I do put one out, you're like, oh yeah, I watched the video. Alakarn? Not gonna lie. He may not be a vigilante, because that implies some degree of secrecy, um, but, like, when he's big. But right now, I don't know what the if you've got things planned for magic items for the rewards, because I love the quest board thing in the D&D campaign. Um, it's such a nice touch. I had a look yesterday. Um, not yesterday, day before. Uh, the save um, Pinecrest, is it? That that one, the reward is magic items. I don't know if you've got ideas for what they should be, but, now hear me out. A set of armor, just like leather armor, uh, or something similar, that will shift with Alakan between Minotaur and Dragon form and is glamoured so that he can make it look differently and it doesn't even have to be pajama mode variation um, so he doesn't want to have to be able, he doesn't want to have to take it off and carry it around when he's a dragon but it'd be super useful um, and I really want him to learn to fight without weapons in Minotaur form because I've been thinking about it for when he's big I want him to have like the ultimate martial order of yeah they don't have weapons but <laughs> they don't need weapons they train for skill and strength and durability and then hopefully eventually he'll be able to find a way to like reverse engineer his curse not necessarily a big brain version of reverse engineering his curse but as he levels up he sort of gets to know it better and feel it out and then turn it into like a blessing of sorts um because i am definitely i definitely think he would go along the lines of um instead of sharing his cursed blood he, as with his last level up it was 
he can now remove like curses or at least try to um he wouldn't want to curse people um because curses always have downsides and he's gonna have to find a way to deal with his um but it's a ability that he would like to share uh, because the actually not dying part is very useful uh, though it's incredibly painful because he has to like experience the death every time um, which is why he just doesn't really react to pain um, and so perhaps he'll find a way to do it where the healing kicks in just before the dying part who knows uh, something like that would be amazing and then he will give that uh, in like low level forms to all the troops and then to higher level forms to like lieutenants and generals and stuff because he effectively wants to create a, an army a militia and then build the militia up and then that'll be like his group of people um which may eventually turn into like a pseudo religious order kind of thing with clerics and whatnot blood clerics um not necessarily Matt Mercer's blood cleric to subclass because the domain of blood uh, if it is what I remember, it's not actually very good. Um, but dragon blood, clerics specific. Um, yeah, so it makes sense if he starts off like that. And it's going to take a while for him to get like learn pugilism in a bipedal form. But I think he'll have an advantage in the fact that he's a very physical fighter as a dragon anyway. And the armor would help because his armor class is pretty low <laughs> uh, in dragon form, and uh, it's probably the same in minotaur form. Who knows? Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to actually do my exercise now because I'm getting a bit cold. So I'll upload this when I get home, and I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you cats on the flip flop. Ciao for now.